Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be in the house of the Lord. Good to see everyone out on this Father's Day and good to see dads and we're thankful for our fathers and what they mean to us and very instrumental in our lives and just so thankful to be here today on this beautiful day to be here to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we're here today. Just a way of announcements real quick to remember that um, we got Vacation Bible School coming up. That's going to be soon, so uh, it's coming up right here, not too far away. So be much in prayer for that, prayer for everybody involved, the teachers, the helpers, everyone that's involved in that. So please, please, please remember that. Also, uh, I saw where we're going to be having the Penny War, so save your pennies. This competition it goes on between the boys and the girls. Uh, the funds go to raise uh, for the Hands of Mercy Ministry, the Food Bank, and Feed the Children's Ministry. So a lot of different things to give to and a lot of different ministries that are going on. Also, don't forget about the contact information that is in uh, the bulletin there for you to fill out. Remember to do that because uh, who knows, on your birthday, you might get a phone call and a big old happy birthday to you. Or if you don't answer, you might get happy birthday sung to you. But I just want to try to reach out to everyone but also just to have like everybody's information just so that we can keep all that up to date. So please get that back to Lisa so we can get all that information up to date and let everybody know. Well, let's take some time today. We're going to honor our fathers and we're thankful for you, Dad, and for what you mean to the family because that's the order that God made things is for that man to lead the home, to be instrumental, so we're going to ask you today, and I'm going to ask some helpers to come. If you are a father and you're present with us today, would you please stand up? And we want to give you a small gift here, just for our token of appreciation of you being here present with us today. Nice tie. Nice tie. Two ties. Yes, Daniel. Daniel to be or Danny to be. All right, good deal. Dads, we're thankful for you and thankful that you're with us here today. And uh, I'll tell you, dads play an important role. I'm going to go into this a little bit in the sermon here in just a short while. But dads play an important role. And thank you, Dad, for making a point to have your family in church because that's very important. Probably one of the most important things you can do as a dad is to have your family in church. And uh, that's important to recognize. And thank you today if you're doing that. And God will bless you for that. Because you have a great responsibility. And God's placed in your hand. And it's to be here at church. So let's go ahead and let's pray. And then we'll go ahead and start with our service. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this privilege to be here today. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to come to the house of God to worship in spirit and in truth. Father, we also today pray for our dads. We thank you for them. Thank you for how important they are to us. And Father God, also for this time as we enter the throne room to worship, I pray that the choir will just lift upon high your name. And also here in a short while as I stand to proclaim your word, Father God, use me as you see fit. We praise you. We love you. We thank you once again for all you do. And we want to thank you in advance for what you're going to do in and through the service. And we ask all this in Jesus' precious, magnificent, and holy name. Amen. 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 Let's go ahead and stand this morning as we sing, Heaven Came Down.
Kansas City anymore. We're going to try to take 363. <laughs> Thank you. 
And thank you for that wonderful, wonderful song. If you would turn with me to the book of Psalm 128, which we'll be at today. Psalm 128. If you would stand with me, we're going to read the entire chapter here of Psalm 128.
Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, happy thou shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children, like olive, plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. Thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace upon Israel. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for this privilege to come before you. We thank you for the time that we've been able to worship because you're worthy. And Father, for this short period of time as your messenger today, oh Father, use me as you see fit to rightly divide the word of truth. Father, if there's someone here that's lost and undone today, we pray for salvation for whoever that may be here today. Also, for those under the sound of my voice that are dealing with a lot of problems, a lot of trials, I pray that they can find comfort that only comes through you. Father, when the invitation's given, I pray if anyone needs to come, that they would come today for whatever that might be. We love you, we praise you, we thank you once again for this privilege, and thank you so much for Jesus. And we ask all this in his name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Four men are in the hospital waiting room because their wives are getting ready to deliver babies. A nurse goes up to the first man and says, Congratulations! You're the father of twins. The man says, well, that's odd, because I work for the Minnesota Twins. A nurse says to the second guy, congratulations, sir. You are the father now of triplets. Well, that's odd, says the man, because I work for the 3M company. A nurse tells the third man, congratulations, you're the father of quadruplets. That's strange, he answers. I work for the Four Seasons Hotel. The last man, he's over against the wall. He's just moaning and whining with his hands and his, his face in his hands. And he's just crying and wailing. And they said, sir, what's wrong with you? He says, I'm afraid to say that I work for seven of <laughs> I'm telling you today, it's a blessing to be a dad. It's an honor to be a father. It's such a privilege to be a dad, to be able to have that great responsibility. To be able to love on them, cherish them, to see them be born. As soon as they come out of the womb, you cannot tell me that there is no God because to see something miraculous as that something take place, it's only of God to see such a beautiful thing take place. But sadly, today in our world, there is a shortage of real men. We need men that will stand up for truth. We need men that will stand up for that which is right. Sadly, today we have a lot of so-called men who don't stand up for what's right and who abandon their family. The real man will say this to his family, For me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. That's what it's all about. That's what a real man will do. You know, there's a lot of men or boys in the world today, but in order to say that you are a man and that you hold that position, it takes wisdom, it takes someone being mature, it shows virtue and it shows that they are godly and that they're a biblical man that God has set the model for. Coming back to fathers, I've remembered that 
a story once of a man that says, Father's Day is the one time of the year where I get complete obedience from every member of my family. I tell them not to spend a lot of money on me, and they don't. What is real manliness? What is a real man supposed to look like? What's their characteristics supposed to be? What are they supposed to have that's in their life that makes them different? Well, as you know, we get instructions a lot with things that we buy. And if you're like me, sometimes I try to jump into the process too quickly and I don't read the instructions. And before you know it, you get down to the bottom of the box, you're trying to put stuff together, and you're like, hmm, where does this screw go? Where does this little piece go that's supposed to be on this device that will possibly play such an important role? But we get instructions basically with anything. You get a new car, and you open up that manual, and they got all these gizmos, these bells, and these whistles, and you better read it. Because when that beep beep goes on, you don't know what it is. You're getting ready to start panicking. So you better read up on stuff. But see, for life and for us men today, we have an instruction book that God has given us on how that we are to conduct ourselves and how we are to treat our families and where we're supposed to have them at on Sundays. God has given us the best instruction book that's ever been. And we are to abide by that. We're to live by that. And I encourage you, men today, to raise your family, to instruct them by what thus saith the Lord. Oftentimes people will say, well, I'm a tough man. I've learned how to be tough. Don't you know the Duke, John Wayne? He's a real man. That's who I want to be. We get this perception by TV today of what a man's supposed to look like. He's supposed to be tough and gruff, and he's supposed to be this certain way. But hey, those things might be characteristic of a man, but I'd rather have a man that loves the Lord with all his heart than all those other things. That's what God wants in a family. So the Bible says in Genesis 1, verse number 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. That God made them in the beginning male and female. There are those trying to tell us that there is no fundamental difference. Between those, when we're speaking about in the name of equality, men and women are equal, but they are not the same. God had his plan. He created man first to be the leader of the home. And then he took from his rib and called Eve because that is woman to take from the rib. That's the order God created it to be. God created man to be the leader of the home. Now, women, I'm not downplaying you at all because I'm thankful today for women that have deadbeat dads in the home and they have fathers that just have abandoned them, that have taken up the role and they have raised their children and they've done it and they brought them to the house of the Lord. Praise God's name for those women. But today God has instrumented and he says from his word that man is to lead the home. Lead the family. God made man and God made woman. God made them different. God made them different for a purpose. And this psalm that we looked at here today, we're going to find out what makes a real man. God's plan for the man. First of all, in order to be a man that is a real man for the Lord, a real man will have a faithful walk. Look back at verse number 1. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord that walketh in his ways. This verse talks about the pattern that a husband, that a father is to set before his children. You are the example setter for the family. You are the one that sets the example for them to follow. 
A man that loves the Lord should be one that's found worshiping the Lord. Set that example. He's to be a godly husband. He is to be one that has that personal walk with Almighty God. His wife and children need to see the husband and father walking with God. They need to see that. They need to see a dad that's on his knees praying. They need to see a dad that's faithful to the word that reads it day and night. That's what a family needs to see. The reason you ought to live such a godly life is that you are modeling your, before your family what Almighty God is like and what the Lord Jesus is like. What a tremendous responsibility, but also at the same time what a blessing that it truly is. See, the woman is glory of the man. That is the home of the man pictures God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ. The woman pictures the church, the bride of Christ. And husbands, you are to love your spouses as Christ loved the church and died for her. Love your families. Don't ever let the idea of religion and spirituality get in the way. But love your families and treat them with respect. So a real man, first of all, will have a faithful walk. But then secondly, a real man will have a fruitful walk. Look at verse number 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. See, God's plan is that the father, the husband, is to provide for the family. He's to be the provider Genesis 3.19 says, By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food will you return, until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken away, for dust you are, to dust you will return. See, man and woman had it all made in the beginning. Oh, they had the perfect scenario. Everything was perfect. But because of allowing Satan to entertain them, following his ways... They understood completely what sin was. Original sin came on the scene. And because of that, they were cast out of the place that was perfect where they had it all made. So then God said to the man, you shall work by the sweat of your brow. The woman would face the pains of childbearing. But the man would be the provider to be the provisionary. This is what a family needs. A man that will set across the vision for the family to say, this is what our family is going to do. Hey, I'm thankful today. My dad, yes, he has dementia now. Yes, I'm at the point now, me and my other brother, we go and we take care of him. The roles are reversed. We have to take care of him. But so many years ago, Back when my dad was healthy and my mom, we would get up on Sunday morning. And I'm going to tell you right here, there was no doubt, not even a little bit of doubt in my mind, that on Sunday morning, where we were going. If I were to question, I would probably have gotten looked at oddly. What do you think we're going somewhere else? I remember one time growing up. And this was just because I loved racing so much that I wanted to go to a NASCAR race. And finally, some of the guys in the church said, my dad's name is Dennis. said, Dennis, you need to take that boy to a race. He loves going, and it was on a Sunday. And my dad's like, okay. And that was one exception I can ever remember that my dad ever went somewhere else on Sunday morning and took me. And I'm thankful for that. Because so often today, you know what happens? We have parents that wake up, and you know what they say to their kids? Honey, do you want to go today? Do you feel like going? Do you feel like it? Do you want to go? You don't have to go. Rub them on the head. You don't have to go. 
Mama stays home. Daddy probably gets frustrated. And guess what? Everybody stayed home, and they've missed out on a blessing. Hey, if you're the parent, guess what? Get them out of there. Tell them where they're going. Okay? Hey, when I was growing up, I didn't have an option, and I'm thankful for that. We got too many options today in the world. So many parents just allow their kids just to do whatever they want. But we need men today that will stand firm. Know what your kid's doing. I served in youth ministry for several years, and I'll never forget, several years ago I had a parent tell me, their kids were on Facebook, they was posting stuff, back, maybe back when MySpace, you ever heard of MySpace? It's been a long time ago, back in the mid-2000s. And they had their own password, and they said, well, i just like for them to have their own freedom, where they can do whatever they want to do. And I said, you better know the passwords to your kids' profiles and to their computer, because if not, they can tread in waters that they should not be treading in. And I'm telling you, waters today of the world are shark infested. And you need to know what they're doing. Dads, moms, know what your kids are doing. There's predators everywhere. Know what they're doing. And then I had a parent once tell me, well, they just said they need their freedom. You know what, I told my mom that one time, and she said, you know what your freedom is? You know what your private nature is? It's my private nature also. What's private for you is also my business. Your business is my business. There's no private stuff going on in this home, and until you start paying the bills, then you abide by these rules. We need more dads to be like that. We do. But a man will have a fruitful walk. God made the man to provide. The provision goes beyond food and clothing and housing. It goes so much more. You must provide that emotional. You must provide that spiritual security that your family so deserves. Provide that for them. Dad, step it up. Step it up. So first of all, we see a real man will have a faithful walk. A real man will have a fruitful walk. And then thirdly, we see this. A real family will have, a man will have a family that worships. Look here at verses 3 through 5 again. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants around about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. And thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. He's a man that seeks God's blessings and therefore becomes God's blessings. The blessing goes beyond his own family. The blessing goes to the nation. America will never be right until our homes are right. That's the problem and where it lies. Today we've got so many things so messed up. Two men. Living in a homosexual, sinful nature, trying to raise a child. Being adopted today in the world. How messed up is that? It's really messed up. And according to God's word, it's wrong. But not only that, it's scientifically, it's naturally wrong for that to happen. But America will never be right until daddies. Get their acts right. God's plan for man is to say, like I said earlier, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In verse number 3, we see the picture of a wife like a tender vine and the children like 
olive plants. Do you know what both of these actually have in common? They both need to be cared for. They do. They need to be cultivated. If you don't cultivate, and if you don't nurture something, it will eventually die and wither away. Men, we need to nurture. We need to cultivate our spouses, our children. Don't think it's the church's job to do that. All right. Hey, listen. It's not the church's responsibility. It's the family's responsibility to nurture and cultivate and teach children the word. This is only a supplement to what they're already getting in the home. Sad today, you go visit someone, you go see a Bible laying around, pick up that Bible, and if there's not dust that's under it and there's dust that's formed around it, that's not a good thing. Make sure the Bible's picked up in the home. Make sure it's picked up and read. George Foreman, you know Big George, right? Remember him, boxer? Two-time heavyweight boxing champion of the world, Big George. In his book, God in My Corner, George Foreman explains how his father pointed him to that destiny as a small child. When I was a small boy, my father planted a seed of greatness within me. And about my future, as we played, he often raised my hands over my head as he was in a boxing match pretending. He said, Big George Foreman has won the match. And he would raise his hands over his son's head as he's victorious in victory. Stronger than Jack Johnson, he would say at that time in his life. It's like Jack Dempsey. He's a strong fighter, that George is. Even though I didn't understand what heavyweight champion of the world meant at that time, he planted the idea in my mind that eventually became a reality. It's incredible that he declared those things about me almost like a prophecy about my future. It's even more amazing that I would not only become heavyweight champion, but also would come back from retirement and win it a second time 20 years after the fact. My father started proclaiming my destiny when I was only four years of age and continued saying it all the way through my teenage years. It's important, dads, for you to encourage your children. To love them and to let them know that there's great things that lie ahead for them. Sadly, today we have dads that don't do that. Sadly, today we have deadbeat dads that just don't care. We have those today in our world. But dad, if you want to be a man that is used by God Encourage your children. Love on them. Encourage them to do great things. Because that is your job that's given by God. To do that. See a vine is very fruitful. But it needs support. In order for it to do what it needs to do. It needs support. It's something that needs to be leaned upon. So your wife is like a vine by the side of the house and the olive trees are like your children. See, in the Middle East, if you had olive trees, you would have a source of productivity, a source of wealth. Those, these olive trees, green, productive, beautiful, and stable, but they need to be cultivated. And that's something for us to remember today. How do you cultivate them is the question. How do you do that? Your olive trees, your children. Ephesians 6, 4, I believe, tells us this. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Just on a funny note here. 
You probably remember the show Sanford and Son, right? It's funny. Yeah, it's got a little bit of stuff here occasionally, back all the way in the 70s. But I always thought to myself, I know this is just pretend, but I wonder if Lamont ever thought he could ever go anywhere because he was always called Big Dummy. I don't know about you, but that would not be encouraging my whole life for my dad to call me, you Big Dummy. But the thing is today, if you do not encourage your kids and you're always just thinking that they are just there and you're not nurturing them, you're not admonishing them, you're not really cultivating them, you're not really going to see much come from them. They need their dads. Don't provoke them. That means to exasperate them, to frustrate them, to badger them, to wound them, to humiliate them. Josh McDowell said something, and this is really important. He said that rules without relationships make rebellion. You can have rules and say, you can't do this, you can't do that. But there's also got to be relationships. Dads, love your sons. Teach them what a real man is supposed to be. Dads, teach your daughters about how a man is supposed to treat a lady. Do those things. Teach those things. That's how that you cultivate your children, is by teaching them these things. See, love isn't something... You buy, your kids spell it T-I-M-E, time. And it costs a whole lot more than M-O-N-E-Y, money. See, the word for nurture here is the idea of tending a garden just like you would cultivate your olive trees. Weeding, watering, fertilizing, it takes discipline, instruction. It takes demonstration. I heard by a report that the average father spends seven and a half minutes per week with his teenagers. That's a report that's out. That's sad. Dads need to be more involved in their children's lives. Not by texting, not by Facebook or Messaging back and forth, but actual physical, eye to eye speaking contact because that's so important. We need to see that more and more today in our society. So, what makes a real man? And what about his future wealth? Look in verse number six. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children. And peace upon Israel. Some parents say, well, I'm thankful for my children. I can't wait for them to get older. They can play this sport, play that sport, grow up, go to college, be a very important doctor or scientist or whatever they choose to be. And that's how I see wealth. But that's not really what makes a man wealthy. A man of God. What makes a man wealthy is to see what he's poured into his children come to fruition. Because when you have children, your prayer from day one is that one day they will kneel on their knees and they will trust Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. That's what makes a family wealthy is for their children to be in the house of God. To trust the Lord. goal of man is that their children, their grandchildren will all day, one day, stand before the throne and will all be able to worship together saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty forever and forever and forever. I'm reminded of a story and I'll say this in closing. The story is told of a king who was in his throne room while he was in his throne room he was holding counsel with his advisors his noblemen and his high ministers of state they were having a pretty serious meeting suddenly there was a big loud clatter 
doors burst open. All her eyes turned at the door. And lo and behold, a young boy ran into the room. Just wild and free. One of the king's royal guardsmen tried to stop him. He said, lad, stop right there. You cannot enter the king's royal room. Don't you know you're disturbing the council and their meeting? The lad turned around with a big smile on his face and he said this. He said, he might be your king, but with an even bigger smile, he said, but he's my daddy. Isn't it wonderful today to know many of our dads have went on to be with the Lord. We remember them today. Many are able to still see their fathers. What a blessing that is as well. But even today, if you did not have a good father, sadly, that happens. Didn't have a father in your life growing up. Mama had to really do the best that she could. Yes, that may be the case. But I'm thankful today that we serve a heavenly father that loves us so much. And by this story that shows me that we have excellent and all the time access to the one true God that loved us more than anyone could love us. Can you imagine that? Your father, your mother loves you, but God loves you more than they do. That's hard to imagine, hard to think. But there's a God that loved you so much That he wanted to have a personal, intimate relationship with you. And in order to do that, he sent his best, Jesus, to die for your sins. And if you trust him today, you can go back into access to the Father and have that relationship again, which was once broken. I'm thankful for dads today, thankful for you. We need to be men that will stand for truth. But also I'm thankful for my heavenly father that loved me so much that he saved. He sent an old, He sent a savior to die for an old wretched sinner like me. I'm thankful for that, aren't you? Dad, we need you to be who God intended for you to be. Love your family. Raise them up in the way that they're supposed to be raised. But also today, be encouraged to know that you have full access to the Father. And that's a blessing. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together this morning. Father, we love you. Thank you for this privilege today to be able to stand and rightly divide the word of truth. I pray for dads today. I pray that they would be the men they need to be for their homes, for their wives, for their children, to lead them, to instruct them, to guide them, to say that our home will worship the Lord. Father, also we're reminded of the great truth that you are our heavenly Father. You loved us so much, you gave us your best. You sent your only begotten Son who died for our sins. Father, our prayer is today, if there's someone here that's lost, today would be the day for salvation. Father, today maybe someone needs needs to come, maybe a dad needs to come today, saying, Father, I just need to do better. I need prayer. I need encouragement. I want to be better for my home and for my family. If that's them today, I encourage them to come. We love you. Thank you once again for this privilege. And we thank you for Jesus. And we want to ask all these things in his name. Amen. Amen.
be here. Happy Father's Day to all the dads. Go spend some time with your dad. Give him a big hug. Tell him you love him. And if you're in church today and you've been in church faithfully for all these years, thank him for the godly influence he had in your life. Do that. And let him know how much you appreciate him. Amen. It's been good to be here. Pray you have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Brother Walt, would you pray for us?